Thank you. 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 Three or four months ago, I was so excited to receive the call to come and speak here uh, at TEDx here at Bournemouth, the university that I used to study at. And I was so excited that I got home and I told my wife, Hannah, I said, Han, I've been invited to speak about creativity and imagination. Can you believe it? Now I'm at TEDx in Bournemouth. And she said to me, well, um, that's great. I can believe it. It's fantastic. And um, what is TEDx? And I said, uh, <laughs> I said, well, you know, TEDx, uh, TED Talks, uh, TED, how best, um, how do I best describe it? I said, um, well, TED is a global community of inspired thinkers, passionate about welcoming people from every culture and discipline to share revolutionary new ideas and create a greater future on this planet for an entrepreneur inspired TED <laughs> Power Platform, yes! <laughs> I turned around, she looked at me like uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my wife, by the way. That's, uh, that's a cat. <laughs> That'd be weird. Um, no, I'm only kidding. She really looked at me like this. <laughs> in all seriousness, your preparation for today in warming up into this idea about creativity and imagination, I consulted two of my wisest of teachers, my greatest of mentors, and um, there are two people who have taught me a great deal about um, being creatively alive, the psychology of performance, and the purity of uh, creativity and imagination. In the interest of sharing some of the credit with them for helping me to create some of the material from today, I thought I would introduce you to them. So here they are. Oh. I know, right? <laughs> Those aren't random children, by the way. Those are... <laughs> Those are my children, um, Josiah and Isabel. Josiah, who's uh, six, and Isabel, who's four. And in preparation, I said, guys, what we're going to do is go into the breakfast uh, bar, and I want you to paint me a story. And Josiah said to me, Daddy, don't you, mean, don't you mean write you a story? I said, no, I want you to paint me a story. And Isabel, she's four. She's the boss of the house. She comes down and she said, um, Daddy. But what should we paint? <laughs> and I said, well, darling, you know, paint anything you want. You can let your imagination run wild. So two hours later, paint is all over the floor in the kitchen. And um, this is Josiah's masterpiece that prevailed. And I said, just that's fantastic. I love it. Mm, you're brilliant. You must have worked so hard. And what is it? And he said, daddy, in a disappointed voice, scrunching his face up. He said, down here. This is the earth, these green things here, these are the trees, and this blue stuff here at the top, that's the sky. Daddy, this is all that God has made. And I thought to myself, my goodness, my son's a genius, he's painted Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> I better call somebody and tell them. And I said, but what's this yellow stuff in the middle here? And he said, um, looking back at the picture and scrunching his face up like this, he said, um, yeah, Daddy, I haven't yet decided what that's going to be. <laughs> and that's the thing that I love about this creative task. And I wrote something down. You see, his mind wasn't fixed on a certain outcome, right? It was this, um, it was flexible, it was adaptable, it was able to change. Today, it might be a golden shower of coins in a forest. Tomorrow, it might be the, the rocket fuel that spurts out of the spacecraft, goes into outer space. His mind is open. And I began researching and I found something from Carl Jung eminent, most influential psychologist, author of Modern Man, In Search of a Soul, amongst many other great works, and he said this, the great joy of play is that for a time we are utterly spontaneous, in a state of pure being. No thought is unthinkable. No image is unimaginable. Every good idea and all creative works are the offspring of the imagination. And I love that, and I wanted to share that with you today. And we're going to do an exercise together. Please stand. I want you to have a mind that is open to anything and attached to nothing. And play through those, uh, these ideas with me. Okay? Let go of all inhibitions. Don't worry about if there are 17 cameras in the room. <laughs> I want you to think of something that you feel grateful for to have in your life. Could be a person, 
might be a relationship that you have, um, a car that you drive, a house that you own. could be a place that you like to go, spend some time. Think of something. It could be a piece of music that you love listening to. It could be the course that you're studying at the moment. Something that when you think about it, you feel sincerely grateful to have. And whilst doing this, I want you to see if you can paint a crystal clear picture in your mind. Where are you? What is this thing that you feel grateful to have? What are you doing? Who is there? Where are you? And if you're doing this really well, you'll start to feel how you feel when you're in that moment. And if you have one thing, find a second thing. And if you have two things, move on to the third thing. Stay with it. Paint a crystal clear picture in your mind's eye. Create, use your imagination. Stay with it. Stay immersed. See this vision in your imagination clearly. And I want you to shift now to a dream. Something that you want to achieve in your life. If there were no limits, play through this exercise. If there was enough time, if you had enough money, enough resources, enough qualifications, enough background and experience. If you lived in a world where all things truly were possible, where would you be? What would you do? See it. Feel it. Think it. Stay with it. Believe it. Stay connected to this dream vision. Paint this crystal clear picture in your mind's eye. Stay with it. Good. Good. Add that layer of detail. Create the vision. Make it stronger. Something that you dream of achieving. Something that you're passionate about. Something that you can create. Something that when you listen to that instinctive, intuitive, inner curiosity, that passion within you, that you know all things are possible. Stay with this picture. Keep this picture. I want you to take out this blank pot that you've been given. Find a pen. We have 30 seconds to do this exercise. Freeze frame. Freeze frame this image that you've formed in your mind, your dream vision. I'm going to do it as well. And what I want you to do is paint. Draw, not in words, but in a symbol. That doesn't worry if you're not the best artist in the world. Just freeze frame the dream vision, and without hesitation, write it on the side of this pot, the side of this plant pot, right now. Good, go, go. Stay connected to this dream vision, whatever it may be. Good. 10 seconds to go. Whatever it may be. Wonderful. Here's the bit. When you get to take out your phone. Eleanor, the creator of this wonderful event here at TEDx in Bournemouth, come and join me at the front. And I want you to turn around and find someone that you don't know, that you haven't met before, apart from until today. And I want you to take out your camera phone, your iPad, your Android, whatever device it is. And here's the bit where we get to take a selfie of ourselves. <laughs> and I want you to put your dream vision next to the plant pot like this and click. Go, go, go. Don't do it without hesitation. We're on the clock. Come on, Eleanor. You and me. Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. Take it out. Take a selfie. Bring it inside the pot. Well done. Take a, take a seat, please. Take a seat. Well done. But there are forces that keep a, a creative mind closed. And these forces are very real. One of these forces is fear. Fear that I don't have enough time, resources, support, academic background, qualifications, experience. Fear of what other people think of me. And this is one of the biggest barriers to a creative mind, a mind that needs time and space to develop. One of the biggest barriers that prevents me from living out my dream. Fear of what other people think. And I want to show you an example. Some third grade students received some instructions. Create the painting in the right way. And this is what they drew. And I want you to think about what the students are thinking about when they're producing these paintings. 
Look at the dynamics of the, of the paintings. All simple houses. I like that one. Dimensions and colours. Okay, nice works indeed. And the second part of the experiment was to offer the students the opportunity to just complete the painting. Not complete the painting in the right way, just complete the painting. And this is what they drew. And you'll start to notice the dynamics of these paintings. They manifest. Look at the colours. Look at the ideas that become expressed. So, on average, the second set of paintings, there were five more colours used. And compared to the first sample, the drawings weren't just simple houses. And so I ask you the question, what is it then that allows these children to think in creative ways, to express that creativity and imagination? What is it? This is uh, Lionel Messi. He's the slightly better looking one on the right hand side. <laughs> Debatable. <laughs> um, and uh, I went to Barcelona and this is one of the stories I wanted to share with you about the <coughs> biggest creative genius that I could think of. Whilst I was watching Barcelona in training one day, I was watching all of the great players. Iniesta, Puyo, Messi, Xavi, and it was a time when Pep Guardiola was the manager. And I asked with the help of my translator, why is it that Lionel Messi has risen to the top? What is it? What is his secret to success? And he said that, um, well, most people think that Lionel Messi was born with a God-given talent. All he needed to do was just pop out and he was just born this right to be magnificent. He was always going to be the best. Unless you know his story. And his story, part of his story is that when he was younger, he had a passion for running with the ball and dribbling and turning. But he was smaller, physically smaller than the rest of the boys who would bash him off the ball. So, as a staff, as coaches, we had a decision to make. Either we're going to support him in his passion, or we're going to tell him, no, don't take risks, play it simple, just do the basic thing, you know, don't take risks. So they said every time that he lost the ball in practice, what we would do is stop the practice and give him the ball back. Slightly frustrating, if you're the opposition, can you imagine? Coach, I've just tackled him, what are you doing? Why are you giving him the ball back? But they decided that every time they, he did that, they would give him the ball back. Why? because they offered him the opportunity to try again. So I asked the question, what is it that a child or somebody growing up in this environment learns as a direct result of this coaching style? Two things, number one, number one, the mistake doesn't define me. My response to the mistake is what the coaches are going to praise me for. And number two is that they're gonna praise the effort that goes along with this endeavor, not the outcome, the effort over the outcome. There is no fixed outcome. Remember the paintings? I'm left to find the solutions creatively. It might be the step over, or the drag back, or the Maradona turn. Try until you succeed. See, that's the one of the other myths about creativity, right? That we have over here, the most imaginative, creative, artistic people, free to express themselves. And over here, we have the more dogmatic, persistent, determined, dedicated people. And the truth is, the myth is, that these things, these continuums, are not separate. It's absolutely possible to be a creative genius, freely alive, and receptive to new ideas, to find solutions, inspired, to use your imagination, and be dogmatic, determined, persistent, and overcome the setbacks and challenges that lie in our way. A creative mind needs time and space to develop, but a creative mind also needs the courage to connect intention to action and bring it together. So, in researching for this subject today, creativity and imagination, imagination is that birthright of our human consciousness. It's the very thing that distinguishes us from all other living species. And creativity is imagination in action, connecting intention with courage into action. William Blake said that um, everything that now exists was first imagined. Everything that we now see, from the building construction that we're in now, to the clothes that you wear, to the shoes on your feet, they were first thoughts. They were visions. And somebody had that vision and manifested it with courage and creativity into being. I'm going to finish this talk today. There are 
627,129, it will take a few people in this world, roughly. <laughs> <laughs> I researched that. Well, I'm nervous, I'm... <laughs> I was nervous about remembering that. <laughs> and there is no one with your unique creative capacities in this world. Out of all those people, you are uniquely you. Nobody has your ideas. And ideas have the potential to change the world. You have the potential, everybody in this room, to change the world with your ideas. I'm going to finish on a poem from one of my favourite poets as we come to a close in this talk, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. He said, um, What if when you slept, you dreamed? And when you dreamed, went to heaven? And there, picked a strange but beautiful flower. And what if, when you awoke, you held that flower in the palm of your hand? Oh, what then? he asks. He's speaking about manifesting the visions that we hold in our imaginations into the physical realities of this world. Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. A place where the magical characters and kingdoms come to life, where no dream is undreamable, no thought unthinkable, no image unimaginable. Walt Disney, if you can dream it, you can do it. Theodore Roosevelt said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. If you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you very much.